long time ago. He said, Jason, there is a dimension in God that you can get to that whatever you ask for, you can have it. He said, I've been there and I know what I'm talking about. He told me a story about how he was climbing up in the mountains of, of uh, around Schenectady when he was a pastor. And he was going up into the mountains and, and he would pray up in the mountains a lot of times. And he said one particular time, he said he started praying and crying. And I don't know if he was driving or if he had already stopped, but he started seeing all the little lights in the houses in the evening time. And he started praying, God, that house right there, fill them with the Holy Ghost. And that house over there, let there be a river of the Spirit going to that house. And that house, oh God. And he just began to sob and begin to cry and begin to pray. He said, I got into this, Jason. I got into this dimension. You can almost hear it when I'm saying it. I got into it. I got into it. He said... <laughs> You, you, you could feel it. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, Jesus just stopped me in the middle of my prayer and intercession and said, Lee, what do you want? He said, Jason, I found that place in God. Now, when he told me that story, I don't like to just hear somebody else's story. I want stories of my own. I said, if he can find that place and it exists then I can find that place. Now, I didn't have any Bible for this. I just had somebody else who was my mentor telling me about this place. Now I found the Bible for it. When I started studying Esther, I found out that Mordecai was trying to tell Esther, hey, there's a place you can get to where we can change all of this. If you get in the throne room, we can turn all of this around. And I've just got to try to push you past all of your fears, push you past all of the frustrations that you have because you haven't been called. I've got to get you out of your mentality of the past starting to pull on you and feeling your old identity trying to sneak back and I've got to remind you that you were called for such a time as this and if I can just get you to make up your mind to go then I can get you into that presence and into that place in the spirit we can change everything with one trip to the throne room can I tell you something? We can change everything in the spirit with just one trip to the throne room. Whatever the devil's agenda is, whatever the devil's plan is, all it takes is Esther waking up and walking in to the throne room and being accepted. Hey, folks, if you had favor then, you have favor now. If he loved you enough to make you a queen then, he still loves you as his queen now. He's just looking for somebody with enough boldness, with enough courage, with enough faith to tie into the burden and the purpose and say I've got to be in his presence would you lift your hands to the Lord and would you begin to tell him that you've got to be in his presence that you miss his presence that you long for his presence that you love being with him oh <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Let's clap our hands to the Lord now. Give him praise. Would you do that in this house right now? I feel something building in this place. Mm. Now, Mordecai gave her one more push. One more push. And this was the push. Number one, I can't be bought. You can't bring me some clothes and try to buy me out. I'm, I'm dedicated and determined. I will not compromise. I cannot, be, I cannot be bought. I'm not a hireling. Number two, the purpose is too great for us to ignore. And number three... Don't think just because you're in the palace that you'll escape. If you don't go before the king, you're going to die anyway. She said, if I go in and I'm not accepted, I'm going to die. What he basically said was this. If you go in, you're going in to the one who loves you and the one who already chose you. And you are putting your destiny in the hands of the king. If you don't go in, you are giving your destiny over to Haman. And the answer has already been determined what he's going to do. He will not give you any mercy. 
So not going in is purchasing a death sentence for your life. It's guaranteed death. The choice is, who are you going to put your destiny in? Whose hands are you going to put your destiny in? Are you going to leave your destiny to the devil by default, by not doing anything, and just let him decide what happens to you? You know that when the tables are turned, Amalekites are going to kill Jews. And there will be no mercy, and there will be no there will be no grace. It's not in their nature. The devil doesn't understand mercy because there's no mercy in him. Instead, he says, why don't you preempt his plan and his strategy? And why don't you put your hands in the, why don't you put yourself in the arms of your lover? Put your destiny in the hands of the one that loves you. And then she got it. I see it. You know, God is going to bring deliverance one way or another. He's going to do it. He's going to use somebody. He said enlargement and deliverance will come from somewhere because God's going to take care of his people. But he's got you as the one he has chosen to do this. If you don't do it, he'll raise up somebody else and you will perish. And all of a sudden she realized, wait a minute, God has got to use somebody. Somebody is going to make a difference. Somebody's going to be received. Somebody's going to get access. Somebody's going to pray the prayer that makes the difference. Somebody's going to enter in and be the one. I want to be the one. Folks, I don't know about you tonight, but I have to, I have to pull into this. I have, to, I have to tie into this purpose of God. And I have to realize that God has a plan that is greater than any plan that the devil has. God has a purpose for worldwide evangelism and worldwide harvest. He gave a prophetic word. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Antichrist or no antichrist. One world government trying to be formed or not. One world, uh, one world religion or not one world economic system or not all the strategies of hell that are being aligned or not it doesn't matter I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh God is going to use somebody mightily before it's all over it might as well be us it might as well be you it might as well be me somebody is going to get in the throne room Hallelujah. say oh, I want it to be me say I've got to have it I've got to have that place in the spirit. Say, Jesus, don't leave me out of this. I'm not going to get left behind somewhere in palace mentality. I've got to get in the throne room, and I'm going. And the Bible says that she snapped. Something just clicked. <sighs> Something in her mind just, just, just snapped. She realized, wait a minute, in this house that I've been living, Haman right under my nose has been conspiring to destroy my Mordecai and my people. That is enough. That's it. I'm going and I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray my way into the access that I need. She said, let's fast three days and three nights. I'm not even going to drink water. When she got it, she got it. When she picked up the spirit of Mordecai, I mean, she picked it up. And at every great breakthrough, there is a point when the spirit of the people gets broken. The spirit and the will of the people loses its identity. There's something that happens, and we, we cease to remain where we are. There is a passion and a desire and an unction that comes to us. There is this overwhelming desire that says, I have got to yoke my spirit with the spirit that God has put upon the man of God, and the people of God have got to join together with the purpose. And the moment we join that, the spirit of prayer and fasting catapults us into a brand new dimension. We cannot be satisfied with the results that we have right now. We cannot think that what we have is enough. What we have is good, but this is just a beginning. This is not the harvest. What's here is just the seeds of the harvest. This is just the foundation. This is just the beginning. You just got to get in on the ground level. What's coming is so great and so large, you and I cannot even comprehend it. You are going to have your 10,000 